Hello guys, we got another video today. I just got this amplifier in today. It's audio control LC61200. Let's go ahead and open it up. Before we get started, let's go ahead and read off what some of the key details are about this amplifier and what makes it different from others. It is a LC six channel amplifier with channel summing, which means you can basically pair like channels one and two, three and four, and five and six uh, off of one signal or make them one signal. Uh, it's 1200 watts. It's got speaker level inputs, which you can just basically use the wires from your factory radio. Um, also, it's got preamp inputs, which, uh, which is what we're gonna be using. Uh, the channel summing, three-way Linkwitz Riley crossovers, which means that you can use this amplifier if you're trying to go active and use the uh, amplifier crossovers to power up and divide the frequencies uh, for a three-way, like for example, you could have the tweeters on one and two, the mid-range on three and four, and the mid-bass on five and six. Uh, this also has line output, uh, line output, which means you can basically bring your signal into this amplifier from your radio or your line output converter, uh, and basically give that signal this signal to another amplifier with having a splitter or anything like that losing quality and sound has accu based processing which we won't be needing because we'll be using the factory or an aftermarket uh radio this is more for factory radios uh it's got the milc source clip detection light which uh like the jl amplifiers also come with this it tells you uh when you hit distortion so the light will light up and tell you when you have distortion on the radio uh it's continuous power at 14.4 volts 125 watts at six at four ohms is what our target ohmage is um we might get a little bit more because our kappa perfect speakers are rated at 3.5 ohms uh three 200 watts at six at two ohms and 400 watts bridge at four ohms if you're running a sub everything else is just an amplifier these are great quality amps made in the U.S. of A. So in the box, we've got the amplifier. It feels very well made. It's got some good weight to it, but it's also not very big. So if you need to put this under a seat somewhere, it would definitely fit. Those are our terminals. It already comes with fuses, so you don't have to worry about fusing it. Although it's still recommended to fuse at the battery, obviously, but I've already done that. Uh, so you got your three fuses, you got your 12 volt, your remote turn on, your ground. Uh, we're gonna have one and two, three and four, and then sub, but we're gonna make sub the rear and give it a high, uh, a full range signal because it's going to be run passive for the rear doors. Uh, we won't use the line output. Uh, and then we'll just sum one, two, three, and four together. So let me go ahead and get this open and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so now we got the cover off. It's just a couple Allen keys. As you can see, this is where, if you're using factory radio, this is where you put tie in. These are your output to your speakers. They're labeled and you got positive, negative, positive, negative one and two, positive, negative, negative two, positive, negative three, four, five, and six. So these will be the ones you tie uh, to the leads going out to your speakers. We got this front high level. If you're not using, again, factory tweeters or factory tweeter wiring. We can turn that off. Uh, we got GTO Sense, which is great turn on technology. We don't need that. 
uh, we're just going to turn that off because we're going to be using the remote on. You have the ability to use the ACR and which is the ACR one is which is a bass knob or a volume knob in this case since we're going to be using it for speakers or AccuBase. We're just going to be disabling that because we'll be using the head unit. Here's our crossover settings. So it goes from 30 hertz, 750, and it feels like there's little clicks in here. So yeah, there's little clicks in here. So it's not like a, poten a regular potentiometer where it's just smooth motion. It does have clicks, so it does get you, I guess, in that, that exact range that's posted. Uh, the front gives you a high pass filter, but you have selection between 30 and 300 hertz, or you can go 500 to 5 kilohertz. So in this case, we're going to be using a passive crossover for one and two. So we're going to set it to 30 at 300 hertz. So we're going to turn the high pass crossover all the way down. Uh, we're going to want it in mono because we're going to be using the both sides and then we're going to turn down the gain because we haven't messed with the gain threshold and level for the AccuBase we'll also turn down because we're not going to be using the AccuBase if you are you would enable this setting over here so we're going to be using channels one and two and three and four for together so we're going to sum those AccuBase is going to be disabled on that one as well. On this one, uh, our target was 400 hertz. So, this doesn't give you 400 hertz. It takes it down to 300 and 500 on the low pass. So, what we're going to have to do is actually... Um, We're going to have to set it on band pass, okay? And then we're gonna set it at 500 hertz or 300 hertz on the high pass filter. And then we'll set it at 500 hertz on the low pass filter. So it's gonna go lower than 400, but I'm hoping it blends well uh, because apparently the Kappa's are crossed over at 400 hertz for the mid-range and the mid-base if you have a three-way setup. Again, we'll turn down the gain and we'll turn down this gain as well. So three and four, five and six will be separate because that'll be our rear. Again, we're gonna disable the AccuBase and the ACR. And our fifth channel, we will also be, five and six will be giving it a full range signal so we're going to put it on high pass and stereo so that's basically how you're going to set it up if you have a cap three-way set or if you're doing the same thing i am running passive on one and two active on three and four and passive again on five and six the reason i using a six channel amplifier is because uh this amplifier fits and I've also seen other people stack them. So I think they have a stacking kit that you can buy for these amplifiers, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so if I decide to do that, I could do that. But I think I'll eventually get a DSP, which will be a DM608. And that'll let us incorporate a DSP into this amplifier. Um, the main reason I got this amplifier is because of the, the, the power it puts out. It puts 125 watts at 4 ohms, which is really good. And it's a reputable brand, so you know you're going to get the 125 watts from this amplifier. Right now, I'm running an RD400-4. Uh, it's made by JL Audio. It's a great amp. It doesn't get hot or anything like that. Uh, you can crank it and play it loud all day, and it doesn't care as long as it's it gets the voltage it wants, it, it plays great. Uh, the only difference is that the RD400 slash four is only a four channel. So I'm not able to divide the three way like we're trying to do here. And it's only 75 watts at four ohms. So we're basically gonna be getting 50 extra watts per channel. Now, 
in theory, uh, it's not a lot, but we're gonna test the myth that you have to double uh, or increase the voltage or the wattage double to hear a difference. So we're gonna ba basically be testing this against the RD and see if 50 watts would make a difference in sound and volume. Uh, most people say you gotta double it. So technically we would need a 150 watt amplifier per channel if we wanted to double it 75 times two. But we're gonna test it out. We're gonna see if 50 watts really makes a difference. And then after we test that, we're gonna find out if splitting the three way uh, makes a difference as well. So basically, first we're gonna start off by just running the three way on the passive crossover and giving it 125 watts. And then we'll test it and see if there's a difference. After that, we're gonna test uh, after separating the mid bass from the passive crossover. So basically we're gonna keep the tweeter and the mid range on channels one and two, and then we'll put the mid bass on three and four, uh, basically freeing up more power for the uh, each channel. And then we'll see if it, it gets even louder or if it sounds better. Uh, but this is uh, these are great amplifiers. If you're interested in getting one, I highly recommend it. Yes, they're a little pricey, but uh, it's well worth the money. And uh, this amplifier frequency response is 10 hertz all the way up to 30 kilohertz. So you might even get some high res sound out of your radio. I mean, hopefully we, the speakers, the head unit is a high res head unit that I'm using. So we're gonna try that out. It's uh, maximum input voltage pre out and speaker level is eight volts RMS. To 40 volts RMS so and the total harmonic distortion is uh, 0.01% so that's pretty good signal to noise ratio is 100 and 2 dBA so again this is a great amplifier um, if you're interested we're gonna be running these tests so stay tuned to the channel and uh, if you don't have a DSP and you don't want to buy the DSP amplifier, you could take this and run all your three-way components off of this and just use the crossovers that they provide. Uh, but again, it's gonna be kind of hard, so you're, you gotta make sure that your speakers are able to play down to uh, you know, 300 hertz if your mid-range does that. Um, so otherwise, you're just gonna have void in the music. But uh, I think we'll be okay. Uh, like and subscribe We're gonna be posting more content, but I wanted to put this video out there so we could show you what the LC 6.1200 look like um, We'll show it to y'all after it's been installed and stuff. This is a really cool amplifier actually uh, You can see back there it's Probably open but uh, basically when you uh power this up you'll get like this blue LED backlight that's pretty cool as well so I'm gonna go ahead and open it for y'all and let y'all see what the inside looks like and my theory is if we put at least at least 50 more watts it'll sound better or at least louder um, not saying that the RD is not loud enough it's it's good I mean it's it's it sounds good it's just uh the speakers i feel need more power uh some need uh less power depending on sensitivity and stuff like that but uh i think we can get a little bit more out of these ample or out of these speakers if we just uh okay it's got it's got screws everywhere so it's got screws on the front as well so these down to get it open. It's quite a mess trying to get it open. So let's see if this one more screw will let us take it out. So second audio control amplifier that I'm I'm using the LC 800.4.1. I'm sorry for the sub amp. So yeah, guys, that it's not letting us up. Oh. There's a bunch of screws. Wow. 
I just wish they would have just used all Allen keys all over and not have to worry about okay guys it's probably not a good idea because there's so many little screws there I think we're just gonna leave it the way it is I'm sorry I couldn't give you an internal visual of the amplifier but it's getting late and I'm trying to get this installed get the gains all tested and all that so we can do a sound test so stick around and uh, we'll be posting another video shortly comparing it to the uh, RD404 and we'll also be uh, running a test to see if 50 watts will get make a difference or if you actually need double the power to get a substantial listening experience um, obviously uh, I'm not a professional so take my advice with a grain of salt like I've said before I'm just I'm not no audiophile, I'm just the guy who likes playing with music and audio, so. Okay guys, here we got the amplifier installed. Uh, we've got it tuned, I've got all the gain set. Uh, I will uh, reiterate that these uh, outputs, you cannot pair them together, so you one input for one output set of outputs, so. Basically, I thought you could, you know, match or pair together three and four and five and six but uh that's not the case another thing i will mention is it's kind of my pet peeve but this is these screws are not the best especially on this one i'm, I'm not using the the high level so i'm not too worried about that but these are even with the right screwdrivers kind of I, I think they could have done a better job uh so anyways we're gonna do uh, the fronts on passive on the passive crossover uh, three the three-way uh, but still it's still getting 125 watts guys that's still a pretty decent amount of power and uh, then three and four is gonna be our rear fill for now until we get the uh, splitters to split this and then have to uh, until I get a DSP we're just gonna have to use splitters that's bottom line uh, this is one of the mid best driver uh, this is the uh, passenger side haven't pulled the um, the driver side yet technically uh, I'm using this uh, install bay 918.9 conductor it's called fast wire or speed wire and uh, you don't need 16 gauge. It's almost like an inconvenience trying to get the 16 gauge into these terminals. Uh, 18 gauge fits perfectly. And so I'm assuming that this 16 gauge barely, barely fits in there. 18 gauge would be perfect. And uh, you can put 125 watts on 18 gauge all day long. So um, I just ran it because I had it. You don't have to, um, but yeah. That's what we got going on. I'll give you all another sound test for the uh, LC6.1200 and uh, let y'all hear what it sounds like. But this thing it is a beast. Uh, even at 50 watts, uh, 50 extra watts compared to the RD404, this thing sounds way louder. Uh, zero distortion, sounds really clean. Uh, of course, the Infinity Cap is just sound awesome anyways, but. Uh, yeah, we're going to be using the uh, channels one and two on, on the passive crossover and then we'll uh, We'll give you all a sound test and let y'all hear what it sounds like and uh... Alright guys, so we have We have the uh, Infinity Kappa three-way components, but perfect the two-way and we got the mid-range We're gonna take the bass off gonna play some non-copyrighted music so y'all can kind of hear how good this uh, how good this this amplifier sounds along with these speakers so if this is something you're thinking about I highly recommend it but now the Kappa Perfects are discontinued so you're gonna have a hard time trying to find them unless you pay a premium price uh, also keep in mind if you're using the aftermarket head unit 
I like to stress this, but make sure you use the loudness setting. That way at low volumes, your system sounds uh, good. Your highs and your lows are amplified. Uh, also make sure that uh, if you're using a factory head unit, uh, you probably don't have to worry about this, but make sure to use the AccuBase feature because it'll some some head units will actually roll down the bass as you turn up the, the volume it rolls the bass off to protect the cheap speakers but obviously after you replace your speakers you don't have to worry about that especially if you're amplifying them and you've set your gains correctly <clears throat> um, and then another thing to note is I got the Infinity Kappa uh, 3 inch mid-range not the Infinity Kappa perfect three and a half mid-range because it could not fit uh, I'm actually thinking of maybe upgrading it just not saying that this mid-range is not good enough but uh, I'm looking at maybe a Hertz mid-range just to see if uh, if maybe that works as well I mean as long as I use the same crossover settings I think I'll be okay uh, but uh, let's go ahead and play some music here for y'all and see what y'all think has really made a significant impact in the sound and how loud they get. Let's try something else. down to like 60 hertz but it sounds really clean and another thing is if you're gonna if you plan on getting the Kappa three-way component set I highly recommend getting um, some subs or one sub or even just like a small eight to kind of amplify uh, that that bass and mid bass and it kind of brings your staging up to the dash uh, if you get the time alignment right um, I'm using the time alignment on the Pioneer head unit. It uh, makes it sound like the bass is coming from up here and not from behind you. So that's that's another suggestion if you're running a factory head unit. Just get, you know, uh, but, you know, make sure to get a, a, a quality sub uh, in a sealed box is what I recommend uh, if you want, like, a clean SQ kind of sound. So let's just play something else.
that um, just because you're using a passive crossover doesn't mean that the there's a bottom to the frequencies. So if you do have an aftermarket head unit, uh, on top of using the loudness feature, obviously you want to play with the loudness feature depending on your vehicle. Uh, high, medium, or low sometimes will sound better. Uh, sometimes high will be too much and it'll distort. So to play with the loudness setting uh, on your head unit, uh, but uh, definitely uh, the crossover settings on the high pass, you have to set it, uh, you have to set a bottom for the mid bass Otherwise, it's just going to keep trying to play as low as possible. And when you turn it up, it's going to distort and it's just going to create unwanted heat in your amplifiers. And you could actually end up uh, burning one up or blowing them. But uh, yeah, uh, let's play one, a couple more songs and then we'll end this video. All right, guys, before I play the next song, I want to uh, suggest that you definitely sound dampen or sound uh proof or whatever you want to call it your doors that's going to give you the best sound and it's going to make a speaker sound 10 times better that and fast rings if you don't know what a fast ring is or a baffle uh, i got another video you can check out on my channel but basically it's going to channel all that sound and make your mid bass sound louder and stronger uh, i've done both the interior and exterior uh also, make sure you get the good stuff, like the MVX stuff that I used was 10 times better than the kill mat. When I got the box, it weighed a ton of bricks. I will eventually take off the moisture barrier, put some ABS, and then sound dampen that and kind of make the door its own enclosure. But before I had put in the sound, dampened, sound dampening on the doors, they sounded okay. As long as you don't have any big gaps or leaks anywhere, it'll sound decent. But once you put the sound dampening in, not only is your ride quieter, but it just sounds 10 times better. And that's, that's what we're getting with the, uh, with the, uh, with the mid bass here in this situation. said before i'm not some great audiophile i just like music but uh, if you have any questions post them down below um likes comment and subscribe and all that good stuff but uh, we'll try to make more sq type videos uh if you got any questions on the pioneer nex units uh, i'll gladly help you out with there uh as well the like i said loudness and your high pass crossover settings are what you want to be playing with also there's another feature in here that is called Soundmaster Reviver. That's basically gonna take, um, if you play lossless files or Dolby Atmos, you kinda wanna set it at mode two, which I think is a 256 kilobits and up. So if you're playing high quality audio, that's where you want it. If you were playing uh, audio that's less than that, then you would choose mode one or you can turn it off. Uh, but it definitely makes a a difference actually I can probably play a little bit of it before we leave here
makes your music sound a lot crisper. Catch you on the next one.